Good morning and welcome. The liturgy of the word this morning is at number 1070, 1070. Our opening song this morning is number 518, Alleluia, Christ is Risen, number 518.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we want to welcome all of you who are joining us this morning as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. In a special way, we want to welcome all of our visitors, especially Father Jim Farrell. As most of you know, Father Jim and I were classmates for 20 years of school, starting here at Little Flower. Let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now let us give glory to God. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you out in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, 
and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted the message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 35.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to us, for to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. 
This Sunday is often called Good Shepherd Sunday because the gospel is always about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Today is also the World Day of Prayer for Vocations. The theme of this year's World Day of Prayer for Vocations is vocation, grace, and mission. Jesus had a threefold mission and ministry. He was priest, prophet, and king. However, he was not a king in the typical human understanding of ruler. Therefore, we sometimes say he was a shepherd king. In today's gospel, Jesus compares himself to a shepherd. The shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. A good shepherd is a leader. However, the remainder of the chapter suggests the love of the good shepherd for his sheep. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, which is the heart of Peter's message both in Acts and in his first letter. He knows his sheep, and his sheep knows, know him. When we talk of Jesus as the good shepherd, we are talking about his knowledge of and love for his sheep and his leadership of them. And the passage ends with his mission, I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The theme of this World Day of Prayer for Vocations is vocation, grace, and mission. All of us have a vocation from God. God gives us the gifts or grace necessary to live out that vocation, whether as a married person, a single person, a religious, or a priest. However, whatever vocation God gives us is never for ourselves alone. It is to carry on the ministry and mission of Jesus, the mission of the Church. In some sense, we are called to be teachers of the Word by word and example. We are called to be healers, reconcilers, and bridge builders. And we are called to be leaders, again by word and example, whatever our vocation is. My class here at Little Flower, our class, received three sacraments in three days. We made our first confession on Friday and received First Communion and Confirmation on Sunday. We were in first grade and therefore were six or seven years old. At Confirmation, Archbishop Schulte asked how many of the boys wanted to become priests. Almost every hand went up. He then asked how many of the girls wanted to become sisters. Again, almost every hand went up. In those days, Catholic boys and girls thought about becoming priests or sisters. Not so much today. Thursday, April 20th, several parish leaders and I attended a Eucharistic evening at St. Michael Church in Greenfield, which included a reflection by Father Aaron Jenkins, the pastor. Some of you may know that Father Aaron is a convert to Catholicism. The point of his reflection was that it was the Eucharist that drew him to Catholicism as a young adult, and it was the Eucharist that drew him to the priesthood. In many ways, my story is the same as his, and in many other ways, it is very different from his. As you know, I grew up Catholic here at Little Flower Parish, Many of you know that I was first drawn to the priesthood in first grade. Like Father Aaron, what drew me to the priesthood was the Eucharist. My brothers and sisters, studies show that most young men who become priests become priests because someone suggested to them that they might be a good priest. Therefore, I want to challenge all of you to invite a young man who you think would be a good priest to consider priesthood. I also want to challenge all of you to invite a young woman who you think would be a good sister to consider religious life. I want to challenge all of our boys and girls, all of our single young men and women, not to worry so much about what you want to do with your life and to start asking what God wants you to do with your life. Please stand.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray for all young people that they will discern the vocation to which God is calling them and respond generously to that call. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church on this world day of prayer for vocations, may the faithful respond generously to God's call to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For those who shepherd the church, especially the Pope, our bishops and pastors, and all who lead us in faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, that Christ's gift gift of peace may settle in our hearts, in the hearts of all people, and guide us away from injustice and violence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered far from the fold, that they may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and be open to, the re to responding in hope and wonder, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence perpetrated by harsh words, deadly weapons, or cold indifference, May our homes, neighborhoods, nations, and countries, and countries around the world become havens of peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have received the Easter sacraments, those receiving First Eucharist this weekend, and those receiving the sacrament of confirmation on Wednesday, may they continue growing in their love of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died with their hope fixed on Christ's victory over death, especially Paul Myers' sister, Mary Ellen Myers, who died recently, and Stacy Brown, for whom this Mass is offered, may they live forever in his peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all intentions we hold in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, make us the sign of your love for all people and help us to show forth the living presence of Christ in the world. Today we pray especially for all young people who are discerning their vocation in life, that they will listen, discern, and live your call in the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gift bearers for today's Mass are April and John Jones.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment and the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may make of us an eternal offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed Apostle, the glorious martyr, the Saint Teresa, the child Jesus, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our daily help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis and Charles, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather you to help all your children scattered throughout the world. Our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing in this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our song during communion, number 723, Shepherd of My Heart, 723.
There are a number of announcements this morning. There will be a blood drive in Duffy Hall this Tuesday from 3 to 7 p.m. We need 15 donators, uh, donors for a successful drive. Please consider giving the gift of life. Consult the Theresian to find out how to register. Walk-ins are welcome. There are sign-up sheets for festival volunteers. Um, for festival volunteers are in the gathering area this week and next week for those who do not have the ability to sign up online. You can also sign up at lfsummerfest.com. Please note, if you've already committed your time to a booth, there is no need to sign the sheets. The deadline for festival t-shirt pre-orders is May 1st, so don't forget to turn in your order form with payment to the collection, the parish office, or the school office. If you didn't get an order form, please contact the parish office. If you live on a busy street, please consider taking a festival yard sign with you as you leave church today. We will also deliver a yard sign to you if you prefer. Please call Jeannie in the parish center. Extra, fe extra, extra festival raffle tickets are available at the church doors if you need them. Parishioners are in... I'm sorry. Parishioner and artist Steve Wright will be in the gathering area after Mass selling raffle tickets for his one-of-a-kind stained glass pieces. This is the last year Steve will be contributing his stained glass to the festival. We thank Steve for his years of generosity, and we encourage you to take advantage of this final opportunity to own one of his beautiful pieces. Sunday, May 14th, is the 75th annual Mother's Day breakfast hosted by the Little Flower Men's Club. The breakfast will take place immediately following the 9.30 a.m. Mass and is open to all ladies of the parish age 21 and over. Please RSVP so we can be sure we have enough food and beverages at the time of this special event. You can also scan the QR code located at all church entrances to register or contact the parish office. And finally, please join us for coffee and donuts immediately following Mass in the school cafeteria. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. God. Our closing song this morning is number 644. There's a wideness in God's mercy, number 644. This morning we'll sing verses 1 and 3.